In today's episode, we're going to be looking at how to find your role centers. G'day, I'm Trav, and welcome back to The Fast and the Nerdy. I was asked to do a video on role centers by Jeremy and Cars in the comment section of how to calculate the center of gravity of your car video. I'm not sure if he was asking about dynamic or static roll centers, but in this video I thought we'd do a fairly quick one looking at static roll centers, and if people would like it, I might do one on how to calculate the dynamic roll center. Let me know down below. Jeremy has a really cool video in his site where he converts a 95 C4 Corvette into an exoskeleton death cart. I've chucked a link to it in the description if you'd like to check it out. For those that don't know, a roll center is a point where if a force was applied, the car wouldn't roll at all. You can also think of it as the point at which the sprung mass rolls about. You have one for the front axle, the rear axle and the whole car. But for a race car, we are more interested in the roll axis. That is the line that joins both the front and rear roll centers. This is an important characteristic of how your car will handle. For example, the roll axis combined with the position of your center of gravity determines how long your roll moment is. And with that, how much your car will roll given a force. It goes a lot further than that, but for this video, we're just going to answer Jeremy's question. I think the 95 Corvette has independent double wishbone suspension front and rear, so we'll start with that and work our way through some more common suspension types. If your suspension isn't shown here, I think I've done enough different types that you should be able to work it out. The starting point to find the roll center for any suspension setup is to take very accurate measurements of a number of suspension components along the X, Y, and Z axis. That is across the length of the car, its width, and the height. You can measure from any point, assuming it's straight. It doesn't really matter, but what does matter is consistency and accuracy of measurement. So doing this with another person will make it a bit easier, but really all you need are patience and some plumb bobs. For the double wishbone suspension, we need to measure the mounting point of the upper wishbone to both the chassis and the hub. We also need to do the same with the lower wishbone. From here, we can draw a simple diagram like below, or we can use any one of the many software packages out there. I'll leave a link in the description of a free one. That's pretty good. Next, we draw a line through the topmost suspension linkage and its upper pivot point, and then another line through the lower suspension linkage and its pivot point. Where these two points meet is the instant center. The instant center is an imaginary point that the whole suspension pivots about. So if you wanted to think about suspension moving and the impact on other components, using this point and thinking of it as two simple beams makes it, uh, for me at least, a lot easier. Next, we then connect this point with the center of the tire and assuming your car is symmetrical, the height is where the imaginary line hits the center line of the car. If your car isn't perfectly symmetrical or you would like to double check your measurements, simply do it again on the other side and the point where the two lines meet is where your roll center is. Just to clear up a point, if you have multi-point suspension or you have tilted wishbones for anti-dive or squat or something else, then we just need to make sure that we use the highest and lowest arms. In this example, it will be the links one and four. Which brings me to my next point. If we draw lines through linkages one and four, we can see that the intersection point is outside the car. This is called negative swing arm geometry, whereas before when they interacted inside the car, it's called positive swing arm geometry. As you can see, with negative swing arm geometry, the roll center is below the car. Next up is parallel links. Our intersection point is at infinity, so if we draw a line between infinity and the center of the wheel, we find that our roll center is at the ground. If the links are not horizontal, but still parallel, then we simply take the angle they make above or below the horizontal and draw a line from the center of our wheels with that same angle. This will give us our roll center. Next up, we have the McPherson strut. This one is fairly similar. We again use the lower wishbone as before, but for our top line, we use the upper shock eyelet. Again, we just join where these two points meet with the center of the tire and we have our roll center. We're going to now move on to beam or solid axle suspension with the leaf spring up first. This one is a little different to all the rest as the lateral loads are taken through the shackle mountings. But to get the roll center is fairly simple. We just draw the line vertical up the center of the axle and another through the topmost shackle points where these two lines meet is our roll center height. And then like all of the solid beams, assuming everything is symmetrical, the roll center position in the Y direction is in the center line of the car. The procedure for the rest of the solid axis is a little different, but not too difficult. We need to draw both a plan view or bird's eye view of the suspension setup as well as a side view. Here I've done that with a four link. We start by first drawing a line that extends out from each of the linkages that help 
to combat lateral force in the top view. Where these meet, we draw a line straight down. Next, we draw a line extending the side view linkages out to where they meet these lines. Then we combine them, and where the lines intersect with the center line of the beam axle is our roll center height. If instead our linkages are parallel, the procedure is fairly similar. We do as before, but as the parallel lines meet at infinity, we have no second point. But as before, we do know that they are going to meet at a point on the angle they make. So we can draw the same angle and extend a line out from our red intersection point. Where this line touches the center line of the axle is our roll center height. If you have a three link instead, all we need to do is connect our lower links like we did before and this time draw a line through the center of the car and see where it hits the panhard bar. We then draw a line from both of those intersecting points, connect them with the side view drawings. Next we connect the two intersections and see where they hit the center line of the axle and we have our roll center position. You probably noticed that we did nothing with the upper linkage and that's because it doesn't take any of the lateral loads so we just ignore it. Lastly we have the watts link. This one is the simplest, it's just smack bang in the center of the pivot point. And that's it for today. I think I've given you a good idea of how to find the position of the roll center. Hopefully I've answered Jeremy's question. If you have a question yourself, see a mistake or have a comment, chuck it down below, I'd love to read it. If you want to see the original video Jeremy commented on, it's on the screen now. And I hope you have a great day.